All right, so Beauty and the Beast, we're here with Jay Ryan. Yes. So this is kind of an interesting, iconic role, actually. What kind of really drew you to it? Well, it's funny, I wasn't going to do pilot season in LA this year because I was doing a Jane Campion miniseries and I really wanted to throw myself into that. And I also had half a shaped bald head, so I just thought, you know, LA is not going to come and uh, cast me in anything. But this role came up and I was very intrigued because I was a fan as a child of the original series. Uh, it was big in New Zealand where I grew up. So I, w I wanted to see how they had modernized this, this take. So I read the, the pilot and I really loved it. Um, I loved the work that the creators had done previously. Um, but what intrigued me the most was the new take on the beast of his military experiment sort of background. And that he was the sort of survivor um, of this, this huge, you know, crime to humanity. Um, but also he had, he had so much loss and darkness, which was really exciting to play with, you know, all those elements. And I liked the fact that he wasn't the beast constantly. So it was more about this demon inside of him, which sort of comes out against his will. So there's all these lovely elements to play with. Um, and also I was excited to bring, you know, an iconic character, but make him something completely different to what anyone had seen before. Um, and bring that into a modernized world. There seems to be actually an element of uh, humor to the show, which is kind of unexpected for this kind of storyline. Is that something you kind of just kind of bring to the character, or is it actually written in there? It's, it's funny. I mean, I kind of try and bring as much as myself as a person into any role I play. Um, and I guess I'm kind of a bit of a joker at heart. Uh, so, you know, because Vincent is such a dark character, and the beast is even darker. Um, you can't play that as a tone, it's one color, and it's very boring to watch. Um, so there needs to be lightness in him somewhere against all this sort of crazy darkness. Um, and I think when Vincent and Catherine meet, he is she, you know, gives him these little shafts of light, of hope, which is gonna create a sort of, a little bit of a lightness and you know, hopefully some humor with it. Well, even his scenes with his friend JT, again, there's a bit more humor where sure. I think we're expecting kind of, a, you know, the heavier scenes where they're going to go, oh, this is seriously bad, and, but it's not. They, they have a playfulness between them. Yeah, well, the backstory between JT and uh, Vincent, which we want to really sort of discover as we go along, is they're basically like brothers. They're not blood, but they're the last of the family that they have, that these two guys have to hold on to each other. So there's going to be this huge kind of child like, um, you know, playfulness between them. And Vincent's in complete isolation. You know, sometimes people deal with darkness by adding humor over the top of it, and I think that's a really interesting sort of psychological approach to it. Um, and I think Austin Basis, who plays JT, is a very comedic actor himself, so he sort of lends to that style. Um, and you, know, you need it. You need it. Yeah. Well, it makes it kind of, again, fun show to watch. You're kind of invested in these characters right away because they're not right. dealing with life and death all the time. They're kind of enjoying their lives at the same time. Sure, they're real people. Yeah. They have their, their dark moments and their light moments um, and all in between. Is Vincent ready for romance? He's been closeted away for so long with his friend, but is he really ready to embrace a little bit of love? I think he wants it immensely because it helps him feel human and connected to where he is and with someone. Because um, the only connection he has is with JT, you know, and JT is very much the uh, the law sort of, you can't do this, you can't do this, our life's in danger. So yeah, he is, he thinks he's ready for it, but I think he's too scared and ashamed of what he is um, to trust anybody else and give himself over um, at this point in time. But I think Catherine gently sort of breaks him down. She uncracks the china, so to speak. Um, so it might be slowly blossoming. There is slowly blossoming, but there's also um, a backstory which we're going to discover as the series goes on of um, Vincent when he came back from the war uh, and he was in this beast state and how he sort of immersed back into social life in New York, how he contacted JT, but also did he have a relationship with someone else? And what happened? 
um, did it go immensely wrong? What type of baggage does he hold from previous experience in a, a relationship? Is this something the writers have been kind of slowly unveiling to you, or they just showed you the big sure. Bible so far? There's little bits and pieces they unveil. There's so much. The writers are so great, and they have so many ideas. And then we get little tidbits here and there. Um, but it's constantly evolving and changing, so we really never know until that final copy is on the table, that final script, <laughs> what is actually happening. Um, but I'm very excited. We've got, um, uh, as well as uh, Jennifer and Sherry, who are our creators, Brian and Kelly, who are Smallville creators, uh, writers, and did the last three years on Smallville, but also the you know, big scope of it. They've come on board. So that's a nice force in there, um, as well as the other writers, but uh, to sort of guide us through, hopefully for a long run series. Have you guys sat not just the mythology of the show and how there has been some Catherine intersect, but maybe some of the abilities that Vincent has that he has to sure. kind of cope with? Yeah, we're going to talk about his senses. Because it's an animal DNA, you know, we spoke about what DNA from different animals is within him. And it's like the, you know, the eyes of an eagle, the smell of a wolf, um, you know, his strength. So all these super senses. And we want the audience to be able to almost feel like they're experiencing them too. So we'll begin to hear through the soundscape what Vincent hears from afar, what he sees. And also that's going to be an intriguing thing for Catherine too, as this playfulness, I guess, in their courting relationship that this is kind of a, an intriguing element to his beast that isn't so scary and dangerous um, so they're gonna play around with his senses you know and she wants to test him and see what you know he can do and it makes him feel okay about this that these things are not strange and dangerous but intriguing to a female <laughs> What is the core emotion that you are clinging to to kind of invoke and show out of Vincent? Um, in terms of the beast or Vincent himself? Vincent himself. Uh, the whole thing for me is um, a guy who's trying to regain his humanity in any way he can um, and learn how to trust and all the sort of basic elements of, of us that we learn as children to be human and be emotionally available. So that side is what I'm playing with for Vincent. Um, yeah, does that answer your question? Yeah, it sounds like he's got a combination of curiosity and tenacity. He's yeah. been clinging to that humanity as much as possible, but he's got a curiosity about what he's become and how that's going to affect his life. Yeah, and I think the curiosity comes from Catherine because he realizes that what he has can actually be for the good. This beast inside him can be used for more greater good than trying to suppress something. Um, and showing that beast to someone, they may interpret it in a different light than this person that thinks what they have is bad. So, you know, it's a, an interesting theme, I guess, that's run through Beauty and the Beast. What is, what is beast? What is beauty? And where does that lie in each of us as people? What do you think it is? I think it's many different things, and for everybody, it's something completely different. And I love the fact that your beast, for me, could be quite beautiful, and vice versa. But until you're open about it with someone or trust someone enough to show these these elements, you'll never know. But that is where the romance comes into it, I think. To love someone to that great, in-depth, Shakespearean kind of love. <laughs> You have to go through these highs and these lows and these extremes and reveal your true self to someone to um, to really, you know, Has he fully accepted his inner beast at this point? No, he hasn't. And she will help him do that. You know, and then there's that other thing of if he loses his beast and he does find the cure, what is he then? What does he have to offer? The doctor. <laughs> well, he was a doctor. He can still save humanity as a race. <laughs> He can, there's many things, but you know, he, that might play with his psyche a little bit too, as if he might get a, a, this, this beast may, may, may become addictive to him. Hmm. There's many different ways we can go, but also this beast can overtake Vincent, and that's what I'm really interested in, is, is um, the DNA within him mutating and making him things do things against his will, which are very dangerous and which will probably push Catherine away. Is that like programmed? It's not 
instinctual, but more of like a genetic programming that in certain situations sure. responds in certain ways? Yeah, it's programmed, but they have created this chemical and they don't know what it does. That's why they've killed all the other beasts, because they don't want anyone to find out about this grotesque experiment. <laughs> Um, so he's trying to find out, JT's trying to find out, but also there's this link with Catherine's mother, and she was a forensic scientist or biochemist or something, and she has a key to this DNA. I think Vincent knows what it is, and he holds this dark secret from Catherine because he wants to protect her about her image of her mother. The writers haven't decided what it is yet, but it's, it's going to be an exciting kind of journey through the series. That's what I'm interested in the most. And I know we have this procedural element and the mythology element, but my character is deeply rooted in the mythology, and that's what is exciting for me to, to work with as the actor. Um, yeah, so, but also weaving in with the procedural, I think, is unique. Um, and, you know, hopefully we, 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 do it, we do it right. It's challenging to, to weave those two extreme different genres together. What do you think is going to really attract the viewers? Um, just that. I, I think the uniqueness of the mytho mythology and the procedural. Um, you know, there's enough for viewers to drop in and out and watch a case of the week, but that mythology is really going to keep them in there. That romantic element between Catherine and Vincent and the danger of that relationship. Like it's going to be. First, if they ever come together. <laughs> Well, you know what, I mean, eventually they're going to have to come together, but there's going to be a lot of conflict along the way. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm excited to see how it plays out, so I'm hoping the viewers have the same response. Thank you for your time. Yeah, I know just as much as you.